company because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN Educating Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, I believe we have uh, Bill Meridian on the line this morning. Bill, how are you doing today? Hi, Larry. I'm all ready to go, buddy. So whatever you've got to show us, we're really looking forward to it because you were spot on the last time we were on. So tell us what you're looking at now, my friend, with all this volatility. Okay, let me um, gotta share a screen first. And I think, oops. Let me get rid of that. Takes a minute to do this. How's that? I think it looks pretty good. I have not heard anything different from the uh, the Tiger Den, so it looks like it's uh, working fine. So let's please continue. Okay, as we always say, a reasonable probability is the only certainty. And here is my interview with Dan Waits, which is a, a, a far out longer term political economic forecast. If, you um, want to take a moment to jot that down. That is a, a YouTube okay. interview. Mm -hmm. Dan Waits, W-A-I-T-E-S. He is expert in interviewing and putting these presentations together. I thought I was on network television. Mm -hmm. Anyway, here's contrary opinion. This is one of three. Here's a contrary opinion buy signal from August 12th. The low is on August 5th. This is, says it's a wake-up call. It's the cover of Barron's. The convulsions of the past week show how quickly the bull market could end, what investors should do now. And of course, as I said, that was only that occurred one week after the market bottomed and took off. Now I've got two more contrary opinion signals for you. Uh, here's another such signal. Being on the cover of time has usually boded ill for the person. Ivar Kruger, the match king of the 1920s, lost all in the 1930 depression after being on the time cover. And here we have the Democratic presidential candidate on the cover of time. And it was Paul McRae Montgomery who researched 3,200 covers of Time magazine and found out that within an average of four months, the prospects for the person or the investment idea on the cover of Time went in the reverse direction to that which Time suggested about 80% of the time. And yeah. here we go again. Um, if a financial story makes the cover of a non-financial publication, its effect was doubled. The reason for this is that the story was so well established and the trend so mature that it pushed its way out of its own area and into the mainstream. At this point in the cycle, it was at a peak and the trend was ending. So below we see a political story on the cover of a financial publication. So I think that Paul's observation about the multiplier effect applies also in this case. So that's the contrary opinion corner. And something, some things have not changed. When will the investors in the markets react to the deteriorating underlying fundamentals? Excess credit creation has been more than making up for crumbling fundamentals. How long can that continue? There's got to be some tipping point coming up. This period is much like the 70s. Equity markets fell. Prices rose. The economy suffered. We had trouble with Iran. We had a weak democratic leadership. We had general chaos. And the real estate market went into recession. The 18-year real estate cycle, I think, peaked last year, 2023. Mm -hmm. And it is trending downhill Right now, from what I can see, I've been here in the United States since May, and this is what I can see around me. And here is the – this is the economic cycle. The, that uh, projection you see at the bottom, composed of six cycles, the shortest being 12 years in length and the longest about 38. And as you can see, it projected that real estate bust in 07, 08. Then we had a stagnant economy for about eight years, and then 2016, we had a boom. 
as uh, in 2016 was the acceleration point in the real estate cycle, which breaks down into four years down. It's four years down, seven years up, and seven years of accelerating growth. It hit the seven years of accelerating growth in 2016. You add seven years, you get 2023. And apologies for this type of graph, but it was an old daisy line printer that this was originally done on. And here is that same cycle projected for 2024. And as you can see, it peaked in Q1, and it's been heading down ever since. And it doesn't stop declining until the middle of next year, 2025. Mm-hmm. So what what is it? Oh, I just stuck this in at the last month. How, here is how you would have done at Larry if you had invested in clean energy. This is the Wilder Hill Clean Energy <laughs> Index, which started out at 290 and is now 45. Wow. Talk about selling people something that they don't want or something that doesn't work or something that's not ready for mm-hmm. prime time. The utility analyst at Value Line in the old days was a friend of mine. And, you know, being a younger guy in my 20s, I said, uh, hey, Art, I said, what about solar power and you know, wind power or geothermal? And he said, oh, those are great ideas, Bill. But here's how much it would cost. And it was a multiple of what you were paying for electricity now from fossil mm-hmm. fuel powered plants. Mm-hmm. It is just uh, it, you'd have to lower the cost. Otherwise, and, and you, there are problems with storage. So. This is what happens when you try to rush economic development. Now, here's the recession news. U.S. office sees vacancy rate continues to rise. It is almost 20%. 20% of office space is vacant. And, of course, the problem with that is you've got fixed costs that you have to meet. Otherwise, you're going to lose the property. Recession news, too. Uh, delinquencies in uh, mortgage payments. This is... Uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development. I showed this the last time, I think. And delinquency rate on loans turned up. This is not a strong economy if people don't have enough money. And of course, there's record credit card debt. And oh, God, construction, Where is that? Yeah. swimming pool construction is uh, down 40%. So swimming pools are a luxury. These are new in ground residential pool installations. And as again, I got this out of Ray Dalio's book, which is why it's such a bad copy, but it's the USA Central Bank balance sheet as a percent of GDP. And as you can see, it's gone straight up, which means they are issuing tons of liquidity. And as we know, once we have enough plants in operation, once we have all the infrastructure built, except they're not even doing that, the excess pours over into speculation. So... Where does it go? It's got to go somewhere. It goes everywhere. We saw this in the 70s. Mm-hmm. So this is, again, uh, I had this the last time, but that's real estate, house prices and rents indexed from Amsterdam, Netherlands, from 1620. It's the longest mm-hmm. price history I could find. And as you can see, 1620, it gets out to, uh, that must be around 1980, and it goes straight up. It is now five and a half times where it was about 20 years ago. Wow. How do people afford that? Well, we got to pay a few bills here. We stay with us, Bill. Bill Meridian Coach, Psychos Research. Uh oh, here comes the babe. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, with Bill Meridian Cycles Research, and we're looking at a picture of number three, Babe Ruth. Is That's the one where he was pointing to the home run, wasn't it? Yeah, this space bull shirt made a new record for any sports memorabilia previously held by a Mickey Mantle 1952 card which sold for $12.6 million in August 2022. This is Babe Ruth's World Series called Shot Jersey, photo matched – to the game where he pointed to where he was going to hit the next pitch, the most famous home run ever hit, sold for $24.12 million. This Shut is essentially the, the Mona Lisa, the Heritage Auction Director of Sports oh Auctions, Chris Ivey, told ESPN. So if you have lots of extra money, <laughs> it's got to go somewhere, and uh, the oh, auction man. market is a good place to look. Wow. That's even surpassing some of this art stuff that's out there, isn't it, Bill? I mean, this is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, at least cow. the art stuff. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, wow. I guess you put this in a case and you look at it, but it looks pretty stained and beaten up to me. Yeah. But well, I guess it is pretty uh, it's famous. A it's, a, it's 100 years old almost. It should be. <laughs> you know, Bill, remember we were telling about these uh, – uh, Time Magazine, one of my favorite memorabilia on that was when Pete Rose got on there. You know, and I think about three weeks after that, they found out he had been gambling and he was done with baseball. I mean, that's how, that's how quick that thing ended. Holy cow, that's oh, going back into the 80s, yeah. 90s, it's excuse me, in the 90s. That's a good example. I didn't remember that one. Well, I like baseball. I, those, those few things I do remember. So please continue, my friend. Yeah, and right now you're looking at 112 Waverly Place. Now, I lived at 111 Waverly Place. When I woke up in the morning, that's what I saw. And that wow. brick building in the middle, uh, that's Babo Restaurant to the left and the building we all call Big Pink to the right. And uh, that building is owned by a friend of mine. It just sold for $12 million. Wow. And when 
we when I moved in in seventy five, I mean my place across the street, one eleven Waverly, it uh, had clear glass so you could see right into the hallway, and it had um, red carpeting, chartreuse walls, and it had. <laughs> black and gold framed mirrors that looked like the entrance to an Al Capone brothel from the 30s. <laughs> and this place was across the street. And the story of it is my friend uh, probably bought this for a hundred to $200,000 in the early 70s. Wow. And um, the fellow, what was notable was that a, a gold Rolls Royce with a white top would pull up. This was the guy who owned the building and he got out. He, he looked like Ernest Humming, uh, I was going to say a hummingbird, but Hemingway. Mm -hmm. And he had the little paunch and he had the open shirt with the gold chains and the snow white hair and the beard all very well trimmed. He ran some sort of a gambling operation. It was a gambling sheet that he sold and it was obviously very profitable. And he owned this building and he had the Rolls Royce and my friend Jack moved in. And as, as this gent got more and more addicted to cocaine he kept relying on jack to do more and more he finally started to borrow money from jack jack wound up owning the building oh my gosh and when jack inherited it there was a um um uh two gay ladies living you see the the bottom right here they were living in here mm -hmm. uh, one operated it's a basement. one operated as, as a sex worker and uh these this was two gay guys who were dealing drugs up here and so that's what he inherited. He had to clean the whole building up, and he gutted the whole building. And uh, anyway, sold for twelve million. So uh, the my building across the street sold for five point five million, I think, in the early nineties. Wow. Anyway, too much money. This is the average electricity price price per kilowatt hour in San Francisco. Costs are going up. We all know that. But here is some good economic news. In Argentina, inflation is down to 4%, which shows you what happens when you cut the size of government from 25.5 down to 4.2%. So there's some hope if the right people get into power. Now, the stock market, the market is likely to close higher. I've been on this all year in January 2025 than it was in 2024. This tech sector has the heaviest weight in the indices. Tech was so extended that there was a gap between this leading sector and the rest of the market that was the widest in 100 years. So I think the market is still in a rolling correction in which funds are leaving tech and going to the sectors that had lagged. And that is what I have been doing. I'm sitting at about 50% cash. I'm waiting for September to blow itself out, but there are some stocks I'm buying. Mm -hmm. And uh, most stocks have now rallied. You see that uh, this comes mm -hmm. from Schwab and Bloomberg. Percentage of S&P 500 members outperforming S&P 500 over the last month. Bill, isn't it a strong uh, – it's really a contra to usually September and October are the weakest months. Isn't it, isn't it rare that September would be – well, then what do I know? I just – I heard that once before oh, yeah. and I don't remember. That's no, true. We're going to get there, yeah. And the S&P is very extended. Mo this is momentum, 12-month excess return of S&P 500 versus the S&P uh, – it's a momentum index. So that is very, as overboard as it was in 1997. So it looks very stretched. And here's a sentiment measure. Fundamental analysts make more buy recommendations the higher the market goes. Well, now 90% of recommendations are buys versus 30% in 2015. And I read an academic study that said of all the recommendations made in their study, 8% were sells. So you, Only you can't percent. Wow. Yeah, you can't make money. You know, I work for Payne Weber. I know I've been on both the buy and the sell side. And so now here's the Nasdaq seasonality. As you can see, there've been more highs in. This is according to Sentiment Trader, SentimentTrader.com, excellent service. The Nasdaq tends to peak in July more than in any other month, which you know I can, I can generate this from my software also. And is this a longer term buy signal? Well, this is a sign, Larry. This is. The hedge fund industry, this is growth in the hedge fund industry. It was at a peak in 2009, and look where it is now. Wow. So, this Is that because people, of ETFs, Bill? I think this is because uh, people rushed into the business here and then found out how, how tough it is to time the market, and now they're down here. Okay, all right. But, but I think it's a longer-term buy signal, and it tells you the market's probably going to be very volatile, and buy and hold won't really work that well in the future. Now, this is – you were saying, yes, this is 138 years 
of uh, Dow data, this is the percentage change. So in other words, the market is up on average a half a percent in January. In September, it's usually down about four-tenths of a percent. So we're right here right now. Mm -hmm. And this is the percent price change. Okay. Okay, this this one, all right. Anyway, this is percent price change. That means, uh, so that was not the previous one. This is the right one. The um, market is usually strongest, as you can see here in the fourth quarter, and it is weakest in September, down almost 1%. Mm -hmm. And the Dow Jones rose 45% of the time, September 9 to October 12. Now, most of these percentages come in in the 45 to 50% range. Most you know, months are up 60% of the time. So this is from 1885. You see the little green line in there. That's down down 55% of the time, up 45. Wow. Oh, my gosh. But momentum remains favorable. When the S&P has been up at least. Oh, got to pay a few bills, Bill. Yep. Stay with us, buddy. Bill Meridian Cycles Research. We'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal gold is still king, it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at tfnn.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit tfnn.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. This portion of Trade What You See is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're back, folks, with Bill Meridian Cycles Research. Bill, I ask a favor, please. How do you spell the gentleman's name for the YouTube? Uh, Dan Waits, is it W-A-I-T-E-S? That's it. Oh, good. And then did you just go to uh, – I, you know, I don't do that stuff very much. So you just go to YouTube and type in his name and that will be it? No. Should be um, – how, how do I get there? Okay. There it is. Ah, okay. I can copy and paste that after we're done. Thank you very much. Appreciate okay. it, my friend. Please, please continue. So momentum, this this I initially did this on June 30th to look at the rest of the year. When the S&P has been up 10% at this point in any year since 1928, here is the month-by-month -month performance in the remainder of the year. So as you can see, it's up two-thirds of the time. You know, number one would be July, number two would be August, number three, September, October, November, December. So according to the momentum in the first half of the year, it looks good for the rest of the year. It's just we have to get – I mean, my basic – I think the market's going higher, but the strategy is uh, September is going to be off, and technology is particularly weak in September. In fact, Apple is down 65% of the time in the month of September over the wow. last 40 years. <laughs> so now Tuesday, yesterday was a big down day. We had 770 stocks up, 220 declining on the big board, but look at the new highs and the new lows. You had 199 new highs and 52 new lows. That's because you got stocks that hadn't participated in the first six months or the last year. Up until recently, stocks like Triple M, uh, Travelers, Procter & Gamble, because technology was getting all the money. That 199, it's those stocks that are turning up. So that's where, if you want to be 100% invested, that's where you should be and have less of a weighting in technology. Wow. And um, now these numbers point to a rotation this is uh, the percentage change since the correction started. I think this is since August 1st. But you can see iShares, the value ETF. So in other words, value stocks are number one, and uh, the U.S. note is number two. The S&P equally weighted. Equally weighted means it's not capitalization weighted. And look where the S&P 500 is below that. That means that most stocks are rising. It is the big cap growth stocks that are getting hit. And you can see Barra growth is down 1%. And then at the bottom, the smaller cap stocks, the mid cap, small cap, the, uh, at the bottom is the small cap growth fund. Uh, even NASDAQ is down. The, the arithmetic uh, value line index, that's 1,700 stocks equally weighted. So it's a confusing cross current, but – you know, it's a shift away from growth toward value and toward stocks that had not participated in the rally. And here is the cycle summary. And we, you know, this is the one-year cycle in red, the four-year cycle in blue, and the 10-year cycle in green. And right now we're in here. That's the summary of all the cycles. And mm -hmm. I can uh, blow this up a little. That, that is where we are right here. Uh, it always looks like that in almost every year because of the huge decline that occurred way back in uh, 1929. Mm -hmm. But it, it's still, no matter how you look at it, September is weak for some reason. The Financial Analyst Journal calls this seasonal attention disorder or SAD, and they confirm it. It's statistically valid. valid they just can't explain it. <laughs> and now Sounds here's like the S what I do every S day. <laughs> yeah, S&P 500. So this is really – Again, if, you, if you're an Elliott waiver, then you, you may be looking at A, B, C, and they decline somewhere down here. I don't know, but if, if the market is down, one per, down more than 1% on a Monday, which yesterday was the equivalent of Monday because of the holiday, then the odds are two out of three, and it will be up on the following day, which is today. But we're not getting much of a rally at all. So this would lead me to believe with the month of September – this looks like a double top, and with the month of September ahead, I think we're probably going down. You can see all these retracement levels down here, 23.6% yeah. of that range, and we've got 38.2% uh, 
of the most recent range, and we've got uh, 50% of this range. So down here, uh, we, we could be going down to 5,300 in September. Okay. And there's a close-up, just in case. Mm -hmm. um, and do you notice this This red bar? This, uh, this is the three-day moving average shifted forward three days in time. And it works okay. very well in a trending market. You can see you would have bought it here and you would have been out over here, but you, were, you would have captured that profit. And at the moment, it's below the three by three, which is a negative. Does that gap and, that's there, that, is that's pretty substantial, isn't it? Shouldn't it usually be filled? These gaps are usually filled. Uh, I don't know. That, that gap on the way up, I, I don't either. That's why I was asking you. So I guess it's a Well, you know, the veteran traders, out. when I started on Wall Street, the gaps are always filled, and other people do research that are not filled, and I, I really can't. Cast a okay. deciding vote. I haven't done the research. Uh, and there, of course, is the NASDAQ things. composite, which didn't even rally as much as the uh, S&P. And that looks like it's going lower. Also, maybe down into this area, which is the 38.2% retracement of the entire rally. Now, if it if it retraces more than 38.2%, as um, uh, I'm trying to think of my friend in London who says, if it goes below 38.2%, it's... Uh, Tony, Tony Plummer. Plummer. If it goes below 38.2%, it means investors' perceptions of the fundamentals have altered from where they were to where they are. So if it goes below 38.2%, it means that uh, below this level, it means they're getting much more bearish. It's not a normal correction. And here's the equally weighted. This is the equally weighted uh, S&P 500. And notice that its relative strength is actually up. Despite this one. So in other words, I'm trying to make, make the case that the, there's an underlying swath of stocks that are rising. And it is the – I mean look what uh, NVIDIA did yesterday. It knocked – I mean how many – I forget how many billions of dollars off of the market cap, just one stock. Mm -hmm. And it's a weak time of the year as we all know. This is the sell in May and go away. Mm -hmm. I, do, I think we all know this already. We're past that peak from May. And tech is overvalued. This is – the um, uh, P-E ratio, which you can see usually peaks out when it hits 29, which is where it was. Mm -hmm. So it's almost 30 times earnings. And this is the technology index, 26 years worth of data. And as you can see, it is weaker than the average, uh, weaker than the average, just in the S&P and the Dow in uh, June through September. This is, I believe, the percentage change. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, okay. now, here are the stocks that I'm buying. Stocks like I've already bought, Nike, because Nike underperformed dreadfully and then finally reported good earnings. But you can see the monthly cycle that's joined with the Cycles Research software. Okay, we've got to, we've got to pay a few bills, but we're going to stay sure, right with Bill Meridian. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with Bill Meridian, folks. Stay tuned, please. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. 
But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Bill Meridian Cycles Research, and we're talking about Nike. Boy, that was sure a beautiful bottom. My goodness. Yeah, the other one is Starbucks. So as you can see, these, these cycles, they trend up until the end of the year. So I bought them. These are the stocks that I had not performed that I now believe will outperform through year end. So that's okay. Nike and Starbucks. That's monthly cycles extracted right from the data. And then there's the seasonality, the calendar uh, that becomes important for some stocks this time of the year. This is Travelers, TRV, the insurance company. And you'll notice the green line I've drawn here. That is from July 24th to December 30, 111 trading days, up 86.36%. Now, Larry, as you know, in trading, they say if you can be right 60% of the time, you can make a fortune. Well, this is way, way over 60. And Travelers is not an overbought stock with a very high PE ratio. So 86% of the time between July 24th and December 30th, then Archer Daniels Midland, an old favorite. This is a commodity stock. I don't know how the prices of commodities are going to affect ADM, but up 77% of the time from August 4th to December 29th. This did not work last year, by the way, on this stock or on this stock. Automatic data processing up 79.55% of the time from July 11th through December 30th. ADP is in the technology sector. It's really not a technology stock. It is a, an information processing stock. And I used to buy it when the um, Cisco, Intel, Microsoft back in the 90s got very overbought and we were approaching September. I would buy this to try and soften the blow because I couldn't really move to cash. And the three strongest months for this stock turned out to be August, September, and October, I guess because other fund managers were doing the same thing I was doing. And then there's Procter & Gamble, up 79% uh, of the time, 79.6% from August 5 through December 27. Now, these are all obviously not tech names, and they're all beaten down. They haven't really performed. So mm -hmm. this, these are places where I'm uh, looking to put money if I have to be invested. And this is the most recent screen that I just ran. This is a bit shorter term, but at the top is uh, Darden, DRI, Nordson, mm -hmm. and Allstate. Uh, which I would consider buying those three. Uh, host Hotels has some other problems. Merck I would not buy. So this is a screen of the seasonal rank and the relative strength. And the number one is uh, Darden Restaurants. Nordson is two. And the most profitable part of this whole model is to be short these stocks. 
Boston Scientific. I am short Ford, and it was already short Western Digital before I ran this. And that's ADI, uh, analog devices. Cisco, that's SYY, the food stock, not the, the other one. And CVS, which, of course, if you go there and buy something, you'll understand why it's going out of business. I've been short this yeah. for six months. Our CVS and then got, store, one of the best in Tucson, closed. Yeah, uh, They D-E- just consolidate. I can't believe it, but that's what happened. Deer and GE. and uh, uh, Anyway, over the last three, four years, this has been the most profitable part of this strategy. And then you've got strong stocks in the NASDAQ. And what do you have for paychecks is essentially in the same business with ADP, automatic data processing. It's, it's, in other words, it's the number one performing stock in September in the NASDAQ 100. It is 17th in relative strength, but it turns out at the top. And here's our friend Starbucks again. So you see how these names keep – you go through these screens and you look at it from different viewpoints. And then we have Checkpoint, Amgen, Texas Instruments, which is a chip stock. I'm going to stay away from that. O'Reilly Auto Parts, Old Dominion Freight. And NVIDIA has finally fallen out of first place. It's down in sixth place. Mm-hmm. Uh, weak stocks in the NASDAQ, Monster Beverage, which I am short. And then uh, WBA's Walgreen Boots, which uh, is, um, as I said, on its way down probably to bankruptcy. Uh-huh. And Intel. In, now, Intel, I uh, this stock was a short – when I was on your show earlier, and just give me one minute, I'll be right back with you. And um, you see, Apple, look where Apple's rated, and September is the weakest month mm-hmm. for Apple. And here it's already showing up weak in these screens. So, and the Dollar Tree, which fell out of bed this morning, I think it was down 15, 20% on its earnings. Oh, boy. Now, this is from the show we did from June. Uh, There was a sell on Intel. You can see that right here and on these screens. And Intel now. So it was 30-something then. It was 20 as of last night. Mm -hmm. And it's still showing up weak. Now, that's the 10-year note, which shows that we were in the strongest part of the year. We're headed into the weaker part of the year in September. And the note cycle is rising. But the third week in September is like Death Valley or the Bermuda Triangle. It's down 81% of the time for <laughs> That's the in notes. That's tre- Treasury notes? For the 10-year note, it is that. So okay. um, this se- strong seasonality is over, and you're headed toward a, a sell in, in the middle of the month or so. Now, oil, the oil, if you're an oil bull here, you're swimming upstream. As you can see, the seasonality from July, October, November, I found no solution for that. I mean, whether – whether oil was up or down prior to October and November, it doesn't benefit you at all. It's just two very weak months. And there's the oil monthly cycle. So there's the static cycle, which is seasonal. It doesn't change. There's the dynamic cycle. So both of them are pointing toward lower oil prices. I don't know why fundamentally, but that's what it points to. So and here's the oh here's the notes week period. The seventeenth through the twenty second has been one of the most bearish periods in any year, down eighty one percent of the time. I'm sorry, the slide is out of place. But you can see that right there, the seventeenth through the twenty second. And there's oil, it's in the oil section. Oil monthly, and I, I think you headed into support here around sixty five bucks around here. Mm-hmm. And that's the energy stocks, which are also weak. They don't, they don't but they, they actually hold up in October, November. They hold up, but the oil price does not. So there's a difference there. And gold, the next projected turning point is on the sixth, likely a low. The support level is 2,500. So we're headed toward, I think, 2,650. August and September are the two strongest months. From July 6th through October 13th, gold has risen 61% of the time. So we're in the strong seasonal period. See, that breakout from that rectangle points to 2650. Yep. And that is the monthly histogram, as you can see, very strong in September. Mm-hmm. And that's 158 years worth of data. Wow. And um, so anyway, uh, Cycles Research ranked number one for market timing in 2002 and 2016 by Timer Digest, an independent rating agency. Ranked number three in stock market timing by the same agency over 19 years versus 170 services. According to them, cycle research signals kept investors two to 300 basis points over the S&P 500. And I was an advisor to a name you'll remember, um, Larry, Frankie Joe. Oh, my gosh, yes. I remember the circumstances around his death. Very suspicious. But go ahead, please. And, 
Yeah, well, I was his advisor for 10, 12 years. He was 15 wow. years straight up without having a losing year. Started out yeah. with 600 bucks and made himself oh. an interstate securities, 32 million bucks over that amount of time. And he, he used to yell at me if I got down. He'd say, Billy, do you have six, more than 600 bucks? Then you're in better shape than me. <laughs> and, this, and this is the cell wow. signal that was on NVIDIA in my, for my software in June. Well, stay tuned. We're going to chef with Bill Beretti in just a second, folks. Hang in there. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back with Bill Meridian Cycles Research. Bill, we got about uh, three minutes left. As you'd yes. like to say, finish up and then tell the folks how they can reach you. Yeah, well, this I'm just pointing out, this is the value of, of uh, cycles in that at tops, tops are more diffuse and harder to catch. Lows are easier to spot, whether it's technical or fundamental, because the ultimate support level is zero. It doesn't go any lower than that. But in terms of percentage, I mean, how, what percentage is NVIDIA up or Tesla up? Mm -hmm. So these long-term monthly cycles, as you can see, I mean, I did this in uh, probably the first week of June. And as you can see, we don't come into a buy here until, well, now it should be bottoming out in September. So this is the value of this type of work and combined with this type of work. 
Mm -hmm. uh, where, where did we go here? With the seasonality. Mm -hmm. So you put the two of them together and you get a big leg up. And if you are interested uh, in this, I can do this on any portfolio, any stock index, or just email mm -hmm. bill at cyclesresearch.com. And also wow. I'll throw in – uh, for the Foundation for the Study of Cycles, Ed Dewey's cycle book is available again. Cycles of the Mysterious Forces that Trigger Events is, was released on March 19th. So that is the original book completely redone by the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. Well, I, like the, I like the graphics on it. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, thanks for joining us, my friend. Sure. We really appreciate it. And I don't know when you're heading home, but please travel safe and we'll keep in touch. I shall and, do so. Uh, Perfect job again, Bill. We really, really appreciate oh, well, it. So. so thank you. Thanks for, well, we certainly do. Thanks a lot, folks. Remember, tomorrow our guest will be uh, Mike Moore of Moore Analytics. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. And we'll see you on the flip side uh, tomorrow, and we'll do it then. So thank you very much for joining us. Mm -hmm.